Thanks so much for having me here. It's great to be back in Lisbon. As Patty said, Google's mission has remained steady for 20 years, to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. I've spent the past eight years working to fulfill this mission by helping Google Search work on mobile phones with a focus on emerging markets. I've been lucky enough to work on something that's touched the lives of billions of people by giving them access to information. Search now serves people all across the globe in more than 150 languages and over 190 countries. We've always been focused on making information accessible and useful. And we want to build experiences that make your information useful to you. A few months ago, I took on responsibility for leading privacy efforts at Google, because I think that we can continue to build great experiences and products, but only if we get privacy right. Public conversation is increasingly focused on digital privacy and the responsibilities of the tech industry. Recent headlines reflect people's concerns that their personal data could be stolen by hackers, collected by malicious apps, or shared with third-party marketing firms without their knowledge. As an industry, we have a responsibility to keep people's data safe and secure. This has always been our view at Google, and I'm optimistic that the tech sector will continue to improve privacy and security policies. However, beyond this baseline of security, decisions aren't black and white. We need to strike the right balance. For instance, we could require two-factor authentication and biometric identification every time you read an email message. This would make accounts virtually impervious to hackers, but it would also make technology more cumbersome to use and make it almost impossible for people who misplace their phones. We could discard all data about how you use our products, but at a cost of not being able to introduce new and innovative features. At Google, we believe that it should be up to you to decide the right mix of features that are right for you. And it's up to us to enable you to make those decisions. We're committed to making these choices easy to understand and front and center when using our products. When I was preparing for this trip, there were several moments when Google used my data in ways that were helpful for me. My flight was automatically added to my Google Calendar, from the confirmation in my Gmail, and this was really helpful because then I had all the information in one place. And because of this, uh, Google reminded me to download an offline map of Lisbon. And also because of my calendar entry, the morning of my trip, I got a notification from Google saying that I needed to leave earlier for the airport because there was more traffic than expected. All of this was enabled by buying, being signed in with the same account across all of these products. And in the future, I can envision many more ways that tech companies can build systems to help people through data-driven technologies. For instance, it's still difficult to get good personalized recommendations for places to go, such as interesting concerts, new restaurants, and local meetups based on what you've enjoyed in the past. And why can't I get Google to tell me where I can get the best bowl of caldo verde? These are difficult problems, yet we can make progress with better data and better algorithms. And this is our challenge at Google and for the tech industry as a whole. We must continue to invent new and better data-driven products while being transparent about what data is collected and how it is used. And we need to let users choose what data 
if any, they're comfortable sharing with us to enable these products. In the last few months since I took on this new job, I've gotten lots of questions from friends and family like, what does Google know about me? Why am I being asked to review a restaurant I was just at? And how does Google even know that I was there? By the tenor of all of these questions, it's obvious that we have a lot of work to do. These are fundamental questions, and it's on us to make sure the answers are clear. Let me tell you a little bit about how we've been approaching privacy at Google. This has always been a priority for us. And GDPR, which was one of the biggest company-wide efforts over the last two years, has helped us focus our work and solidify our framework. We think of four dimensions that need to fit together. First and foremost, your data needs to be protected from misuse as well as from hijackers. Your data should be accessible. You need to know what exists, where it exists, and how you can find it. We need to build flexible controls so that you can tell us how you want your data used, and we can respect your wishes. And these controls need to be simple. These principles have been important to us for many years and served as the foundation of our work on GDPR. Addressing these dimensions is the only way to unlock products and experiences that are helpful. I want to share more about what we're doing in each of these areas. First, let's talk about how your data needs to be protected. If people don't feel safe, they won't bother using our products. It's as simple as that. It's our job to keep your data safe from potential hijackers, but we need to strike a careful balance between locking down your data and making sure you can recover your account if needed. We invest heavily in detecting suspicious sign-in activity and taking automatic action to secure your account against attackers. However, for every would-be hijacker we successfully keep out, there are also people who have forgotten their password, left their phones in a taxi, or otherwise locked out of their accounts. And these problems can cause real user frustration. For users, we introduced the Security Center to help give personalized advice for improving account security. For example, the security checkup helps ensure that we have enough information for secondary challenges and also lets users know about potential security threats to their account. Now, when it comes to security, different people have different needs and different risk profiles. While this sounds obvious, some people face life circumstances that put them at higher risk in ways that are not always straightforward. Over the past few years, we've seen a disturbing trend. High-profile individuals like politicians, activists, and journalists are specifically being targeted through what we call spear phishing attacks. While our systems were optimized to protect all users equally, the balance we strike between security and ease of use might not be right for people who are being specifically targeted by determined adversaries. The realization that we have a population of users with different, substantially different risk profiles led us to develop a new product for safeguarding their accounts. The Advanced Protection Program is specifically built to protect the online security of these high-risk users. The program requires a hardware-based security key to sign in, which does introduce some additional friction, but provides dramatically higher protection against targeted attacks. Since the program started last year, we've seen activists, politicians, and journalists adopt it. Security for everyone doesn't mean that everyone requires the same level of security. We need to ensure that we have security protections that suit different needs. 
Another dimension that we work on is making sure you can always find and access your data. The Google account has existed for some time now. It's where we give you a comprehensive view of all of your privacy settings and information across all Google products. For example, this is where you can go to see your ad settings to help you choose the type of ads that you will want to see and to turn personalization on and off. While many people visit their Google account over the years, we've realized we could do a better job at empowering users to find information about their account and their privacy center. So we, we redesigned the site with more prominent security and privacy options and a simplified navigation so that people can find and, find and manage their information more easily. We built this great experience for your data controls, but not enough people know about it. When we asked people on the street randomly if they knew how to access their Google account, many did not. So we need to help people find it. This is why across all Google products, you'll start to see your account avatar, the picture you added to your account, appear more prominently. When you click on your avatar, you'll get a direct link to your Google account. This will also help people understand when they're signed in and sharing information with Google. My goal is to make sure that everyone knows exactly how to get to their privacy settings and view all of their Google data. Now, once you're using a product, you should have flexible controls as well. Your settings should cater to your needs. People differ in how much information they want to share. It's really a personal decision. A woman in my team always shares her location with her husband because she likes to bike, but she has a heart condition, so she wants to make sure he can always find her. While another engineer in the team never wants to share her location. At Google, we believe you should be able to delete and turn features off if you don't want to use them. And you should be able to pack up your data and leave if you'd prefer to use a different service. In the Google account, you can find the tools to do this. It's called Download Your Data. We launched this seven years ago because we believe that your data belongs to you, and you should be able to take it with you. The original team that launched this feature is still proudly working on data portability. And this July, the team took this a step further, working in tandem with leading technology providers to announce the Data Transfer Project. It's an open source initiative dedicated to developing tools so that people can transfer their data directly from one service to another without having to download and re-upload it. People tell us that tools like the Google account are helpful, but we also need to make it easier to access privacy information and data controls within the products that you use every day. This is why we launched Your Data in Search, a way for people to review the data collected by search, understand how this data is used, and learn about data controls all without leaving search. For example, you'll have easier access to view and delete your search activity. So once we've protected your data, given you access to it, and built flexible controls, we need to ensure that all of this information is simple and comprehensible. Making sure our products match what our users want starts with talking to as many people as possible whenever possible. At Google, we're deeply data-driven, and we learn a great deal every time we talk to users. Over the past two years, we've run a research program through the Privacy and Data Protection Office every six weeks all around the world with the goal of helping us build simple privacy products that people understand. This isn't a program where the research team goes off, does the work, and brings back a report. We try to bring whole teams, engineers, designers, product leads, writers, everyone who can come. We do that because watching somebody struggle to understand a setting or a feature is a great way to increase the team's empathy around user comprehension. 
This program was a large part of driving the new Google account experience that I mentioned earlier. As a part of the redesign alone, we talked to over 11,000 people across 19 countries. It was also a big part of the approach we took when relaunching our privacy policy, as we wanted to make sure everyone could understand it. We started by assembling a team of cross-functional uh, cross -functional members, designers, writers, lawyers, and researchers to work together and approach the task as if they were building a product. Then throughout the process, we got feedback from dozens and dozens of people from around the world. While the content of the policies didn't change, we supplemented the text with videos and illustrations and added concrete, approachable examples because we know that different people have different ways of learning. The result was a privacy policy that users and the industry told us that people actually understood. It's our challenge to build helpful experiences that make it worthwhile for you to entrust your data with us. From features like Smart Compose and Gmail that leverages aggregate data to save users from typing over a billion characters a week, to the Google Assistant, which helps you with your everyday interactions, we strive to make your data work for you. Earlier, I mentioned a few of my, uh, how my data was used across Gmail, Calendar, and Maps to help me prepare for my trip. I know how this works, and I'm still pleasantly surprised every time I see it. These kinds of experiences are a great example of how data can be helpful when it's connected together. When it comes to how your data is used, there's no one answer that's right for everyone. We believe that it should be up to you to decide what is right for you. We're committed to making these choices easy to understand and front and center when using our products. We don't always get it right. That's why we do a new research study every few weeks, but we're always learning and improving. And this isn't just something for us to do. It's something we need to all work on together. We need to work together to create and promote best practices that show the world that technology can be empowering, helpful, and trustworthy, and how data can be put to work on your behalf. We need to do better across the industry, and I look forward to working with all of you to get this right. Thank you.